explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are doing day 19 of Advent of Code and let's just jump right into it. As a probe drifted down through this area, it released assortments of beacons and scanners into the water. It's difficult to navigate the pitch black waters of the ocean trench. But if you can build a map of the trench using the data from the scanners, you should be able to re safely reach the bottom. The beacons and scanners float motionless in the water. They are designed to maintain the same position for long periods of time. Each scanner is capable of detecting all beacons in a large cube centered from the scanner. The beacons are at most thousand units away from the scanner in each of the three axes x y z and they have precise position determining relative to the scanner however the scanner cannot detect other scanners the submarine has automatically summarized the relative positions of the beacons detected by each scanner your puzzle input for example, if a scanner is at xy coordinates of 500, 0, minus 500, and there are beacons at minus 500, 1000, minus 1500, and uh, plus 1501, 0, and minus 500, the scanner would report that the first beacon is at minus 1000, plus 1000, minus 1000, relative to the scanner, but would not detect the second beacon at all. Unfortunately, while each scanner can report positions of all detected beacons relative to itself, the scanner do not know their own position. You need to determine the position of the beacons and the scanners itself, they yourself. The scanners and beacons maps are a single continuous 3D region, and this region can be reconstructed by finding pairs of scanners that are overlapping detecting regions such as there are uh, overlapping detection regions such as there are at least 12 beacons that both scanners detect within uh, the overlap. By establishing 12 common beacons you can precisely determine where the scanners are relative to each other allowing you to reconstruct the beacon map one scanner at a time. For the moment consider only two dimensions. Suppose you have the following scanner reports. The drawing XY rightward and Y uh, increasing upward, the scanners as S and the beacons as B. Uh, zero, uh, scanner 0 detects this and scanner 1 detects this. For example assume that the scanners only need three overlapping be beacons, the beacons visible to both scanners overlap, producing the following complete map. Unfortunately, a second problem. The scanners also don't know their rotation or facing direction. Due to a magnetic alignment, each scanner is rotating some integer numbers of 90 degree turns all of the XY and said axis. That is, one scanner might call directions positive x while other scanners might call the direction in negative x, y. Or scanners might agree on which direction positive x but one scanner might be upside down from the perspective of the other scanners. Uh, in total each scanner could be in any of the 24 different orientations facing positive or negative x, y, z and considering any of the four directions up and uh, up that from that facing. For example, this arrangement of beacons seen in a scanner at the same position in different orientations. Okay, so one is seeing um, plus, minus 1, minus 1, 1, and then we have 1, minus 1, 1, and then we have all minus, and all, yeah, uh, all plus, and so on. So it can see it from any direction, and the other uh, will be the same for, for those directions. By finding pairs of scanners that both see tw at least 12 
of the common beacons, you can assemble the entire map. For example, consider the following report. And there is a lot of scanners and a lot of beacons. The cost of all the coordinates are relative. The, in this example, all absolute positions will be expressed relative to the scanner, zero, using the orientation of scanner uh, as if scanner zero is at the coordinates zero, zero. Uh, scanners one and say zero and one are, have overlapping detecting cubes. The 12 beacons that are both detected to scanner zero are the following coordinates. Uh, the same 12 beacons uh, in the older other outputs perspective to 1 are because of this the scanner 1 must be at 68 1 minus 1246 43 relative to scanner 0 scanner 4 overlaps the scanner 1 and beacons they are both detect to the scanner 1 0 are and that's the ones so scanner 4 is at that position relative to scanner 0. Following this process scanner 2 must be at uh, that position relative to scanner 0 and scanner 3 must be at that position. The full list of beacons are then and then they have a long list and then total there are 49 beacons. Assemble a full map of beacons. How many beacons are there? So this will be an interesting puzzle. And I'm not really sure how to solve this. Um, I think I will have to create some kind of a list or set of um, beacons that each scanner contains. And then set the scanner position so I can check all the relative positions of, let's say, scanner zero against each other scanner and see if I can find 12 beacons that overlap in some way. Um, and there's going to be a lot of looping. There's going to be a lot of interesting math. And yeah, perhaps I even need to do uh, multi-threaded work here. So um, I'll get back to you if I figure something out. And we are back and... Spoiler, I will not solve today's puzzle, but we can talk a little bit about what not is, what's not the solution. <laughs> because what I'm doing now is not something that will work. If I was running this and wanted to find out one position for another sensor, if I didn't know, know it, it would take me about five years. And I don't really have that time. I can't have my computer running for five years. If I, let's say, ran it on five threads, well, it still would be one year. So it doesn't really work here. Uh, so let's see. First off, we have a bunch of scanner positions. And in the test data, you actually have 24 scanners that you need to find. So you need to find an efficient way to actually find them, uh, which I didn't. Uh, but the scanner data has three dashes and then the name of the scanner and then a bunch of probes that it can see or beacons it can see. So what I did here is I checked if I have these three lines and then in that case I create a new scanner. And then I, otherwise I will read the coordinates and add beacons to that specific scanner and then I have a scanner added here. And then I want to find the scanner position and I knew that scanner 1, I could find the scanner position using scanner 0. So, and I also knew that scanner 4 could be found if I use scanner position 1. Uh, so those have 12 uh, beacons in common. Uh, so that's why I'm running these two here. Uh, and finding a scanner position is that this little function here where I go through every available position and, and this is where it goes out of proportion. So if I knew what the scanner position was up here, then I can run it through and it takes like 0 0.0062 uh, sec seconds or something. So six milliseconds or something. But that adds up when you're running 3000 times 3000 times 3000 times. Um, 
uh, so let's see here. I first off created a bunch of test beacons. So the beacons that I want to look at. And the number of beacons, um, uh, different orientations that I can have is 15 times 6 times 6. And we're gonna go into why that is later. And then I run through this and I check if the number of overlapping for this specific uh, orientation is more than 11. And then I write, write out, hey! And the, I change the position to that point and also write out the instance now. And yeah, the duration down here as well if I don't find it. Uh, so number overlap, very simple. Go through each of the test beacon lists and pick the specific uh, list that I want to test, which is I here. So I pretty much for every beacon create a bunch of lists of things I want to look at. And then I have this index for looking at which of all of them I want to look at. And then I just check if it contains and then I count up. And this change position is just change the position of this one and then change the position for all beacons in this one. So that's uh, what I'm doing here. And if we want to look at how to get the test beacons, here it, it comes the funny part. Here you, here you see I have six uh, different positions that I want to check. So all the combinations of X and Y for this combined with all the combinations of X and Y for the input values. And then I also need to go and look at all the or orientations which could be here, which is 15. <laughs> so either plus or minus in any direction. So that means that I will have a bunch of different uh, solutions here and I need to separate them in order to be able to look at a bunch of beacons uh, on a specific plane. So uh, that's why I'm uh, having that many of them. And uh, then we have... Uh, yeah, I can get a new beacon here if I want to update the beacons. And a beacon is pretty much an X, Y, and Z position. Uh, and I have an equals and hash code in here. I can write out the string for this beacon and so on. Uh, so it was not the smartest solution. It is very pragmatic. Will take a lot longer than uh, necessary, I guess. But I haven't figured out any better way to do this. I probably will go to bed this evening and find that, oh, that's how you do it. Or maybe I will not. Uh, if you have solved this in any way, uh, leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if I understand your solution, I might do an update video with that solution and um, credit you. Uh, but. I, I'm a little bit stumped here. When I saw the actual puzzle in the beginning, I weren't uh, really uh, knowing what to, where to even start solving this one. So it was a hard one. Um, yeah, I, I'm sad to say I didn't find any good solution for this one. And uh, I hope that you found your solution. Uh, if you liked this video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. If you have any other comments or suggestions that are a little bit more involved, leave them in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next one.